series of uh, sorties coming up here um, on old railway sites in this area uh, some of which are still active lines but the stations are long gone and others of which uh, abandoned lines of the tracks are also been torn up mostly in the 60s uh, Queensland was like the rest of Australia in the world back in the 60s and the early 70s all of the little branch lines got uh, torn up and uh, motor cars and trucks took over as a preferred means of transport which I find is a terrible shame given the uh, capital expenditure that governments put into these lines in the 1800s and all the labour I might have get that they were over the railway system but uh, the irony of it all is that things like the Gold Coast line got torn up in the 19, late 60s or whenever it was now they've had to put it back again because of the massive growth on the Gold Coast billions of dollars to put the railway line back and they'd already built it 150 years earlier anyway that's that little rant over so anyway so today we're going to go to a couple of uh, well, we'll start on one uh, old railway site and um, we might move on to a couple of others. We'll just see how, how the pickings are. It was a reasonably busy station. Um, 1870s period it was built and uh, fell out of service, I believe. It was taken out as a stopping place in the late 50s. So it's all pre-decimal stuff if you're talking about coins. So uh, anyway... Um, we've got about half an hour to go and we'll be out there, so uh, I'm looking forward to today. Um, thanks for joining me. We'll be back shortly with our uh, first relic from the site. Okay, on an unrelated matter, a bit of rant here about four-wheel drives like this one. An actual four-wheel drive, not an SUV. Um, actually, you can see I'm back in the Defender. It's been into the mechanics uh, for the last week. And they had to fit a new ECU, okay, a new computer. Now, this is a 2007 model. Uh, Colin and I've had it since it was almost new when we got it. We had absolutely no trouble with it. Been all over northern uh, Australia and central Australia in some of the most remote spots you can think of in the rugged conditions of the low range four wheel driving in the middle of nowhere. Never had any issues with it. But I take issue with the fact that. They had to stop building defenders in 2016 because of EU regulations. Okay? Ironically now Britain's leaving the EU. EU regulations have nothing to do with where I am now. I can tell you, Outback Australia, remote area travel in Australia, reliable four-wheel drives do not need EU regulating. You don't need DPFs and all that sort of garbage they put on them these days. And even if you need to put a computer in a car, which they think they do have to, how about we make it so you can switch it off? If the car bumps into a tree and it thinks it's had a major accident, goes into limp mode, you can't get home. I should be able to say to the computer, look, it's okay, relax. It's just a sensor that you're not getting the data from. Everything's okay, I've got water in the engine, I've got oil in the engine, everything's running fine. You don't need to shut me down and have to flatbed me a thousand kilometers to the coast. So please, car makers, I know you're not gonna to listen to me, why should you? Make a four wheel drive with live axles, no computers, and a diesel engine and a manual gearbox that's all we want for outback touring we don't want all the luxury bits they're just rubbish call that an suv if you want i don't want an suv i want a rugged full drive highly capable off-road vehicle anyway i've got one but uh i've had to replace the computer in it <laughs> ran over let's get into it okay just in here uh first a nice repeatable target it's a solid 75 not far down from the call now that I've pulled the grass back. I'll just show you the signal. It's pretty solid 75, 76. Nice and repeatable. We'll just pinpoint it and see if we can. Oh yeah, she's definitely in pinpoint of range. Just in there. So uh get this one to get alive. See if we can get a nice uh recovery from this uh, good repeatable target. Not actually the first. I take a bit of copper wire, or a big solid copper cable, put that in my pocket, a scrap, go into the scrap bin. But uh, it was a little bit jumpy because it was linear and uh, so the signal jumped from you know, the 70s down to the 60s. But this here is compact and repeatable. Well, what do we got? An old lipstick tube, awesome. 
So this, uh, oh, it is an old lip. Oh, it's got a, is it a lipstick tube? I think it is. 1940s or 50s lipstick tube. Nice. Okay, here's a bit of an update. I've got a few deep um, bolts and uh, bits of cut brass. This one is quite shallow. The sight, you can see there, good 75, 76, 77, but it's quite shallow. Um, most of the targets I've dug this morning have been quite deep. So, yeah, that's near the surface. Okay. Let's set the uh, set you down on the ground there, where you can see what's happening here. I'll just pull that back with the pick. Could be a bottle top, but it's pretty solid. 76. It's not really rolling like a bottle top would. Oh, what do we got? A clock part. Nice old mantle clock part. There you go. So some of the relics are deep and some are shallow. Typical of any site, I guess. I don't know if it's ever been ploughed this uh, area or what's happened after the house was gone. The house is long gone by 1950, so um, this predates that. Awesome. Well, this day's theming itself. Maybe it's a clock day. Beautiful big clock cog. And great neck, too. That was an 88, 89, as you'd imagine. That's a lot of gear there. Look how thick that is. Maybe it's for some other bit of machinery. That is really heavy. Oh, it's got a secondary gear inside. And I've got a bit of glass out of this hole, so about four inches down we're getting ceramics and glass, but uh, that's a heavy bit of mechanism. I wonder if it's got some sort of brand name or marking on it. Interesting. This one's a solid 77 in here. I'm about six inches down already. Very compact little target there, roughly. But as you can see, I've hit the ceramic layer, glass and uh, old uh, bits of uh, plates and cups. Broken cups and... Uh, What's that there? See, there's something there, a bit of a bottle. Okay, what's this? Go back to the lander and get my gloves, I think. Anyway, up in here somewhere. Just loosen that up. Is this my target? Just flat iron. It could be. But it seemed, uh, wasn't got any iron indication. I'll just check the hole again with the machine. Well, here's my next find. It might help give us some dates. It's a bowl of a spoon coming out of the ground. I've just disturbed. And that will be uh, obviously electro plate. That's fairly old though, could be 40s or 50s, maybe earlier. Still got some plating on there, look. Okay, well if we've got a hallmark, we'll be able to get some details about that uh, age of this relic. Nice. Okay, you can see we're dealing with fairly dry soil conditions here. Lumpy clay, that's how it comes out, and it gets really hard packed as you get the depth, so we need to swing that pick. This is a fairly promising signal. I want to show you that now. I've got about four inches off. There you go. For a solid 84, 85, and it's only, I get the call right down there. I oh know, 10 centimetres or something. Should be in pro pointer range. Let's go live with this. Don't talk it up too much, but it could be awesome. Seems compact. It's not going to be uh, a lump of uh, folded tin, this one, I don't think. Of course, something wrong on numerous occasions. Get the machine of the way. Check in with the detector. Oh, the pinpoint, rather. Not quite there yet. You can hear it's still not quite a steady beat. But luckily, this clay comes out in lumps. It should come out pretty quickly. This is fairly loose here actually. Some of the spots have been... Now I'm right on the target there, you can hear it steady tone. Let's see if it disturbed him. It's still in the hole. Let's rake it back. Just in case it's... Uh... Okay, look at this. It's got a piece of glass. Not going to be a bottle top though. That's the ceramic and glass layer down there. Right there. Okay, what have we got here? <laughs> it's actually an old lid. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I thought it had something written on it. It's an old brass or copper thin lid. That's quite old though. 
not a silver coin, but uh, almost as good. I've found something pretty awesome here. It was an 8890 um, in this. Look at the, what I'm dealing with here. It's a lot of fun, though. I'm having a great day. It's uh, beautiful weather. Like uh, It's only like 24, 25, just perfect weather for detecting. Check out this awesome find, though. Well, here it is. It's a dog. It's some sort of alloy because it's such a high... I think it's a dog mounted on a little pedestal. He's complete. Look at his little tail there and his uh, four legs. I think it's a dog. I have to clean it up. That looks like, well, it looks like a motor vehicle, you know, bonnet or ornament, but it's too small for that. So maybe it's off some sort of old uh, toy tricycle or something as a brand thing. I don't know, a crouching dog. Freaking awesome. Look how well made that is. I think this is like the driveway to the uh, the main entrance to the uh, station master's house area here. I'm not really sure. The soil's really loamy. It's quite different to the rest of the site. So uh, that makes sense if it's off a kid's old dinky toy or something or a, some sort of tandem trike, or, I don't know, or a bicycle. Pretty solid unit, though. It's got a bit of weight to it and everything. Like I said, it was jumping up to 90. Nice. Well, here's my first really old relic from the site. An old uh, buckle of some braces, men's braces probably. Suspenders, as they were called in the United States, but uh, braces here. That's in great nick. Look, it's still got some silver plate on it. That was deep in this black soil, probably eight inches down. Nice solid 75 though, as you can imagine. Um, that'll clean up nicely, actually. Okay, next target. We've got a really good signal here. It's out of the ground. Uh, it's in this mullock heap. I haven't seen what it is. I just pulled it back, checked the hole with the machine. It's definitely in the mullock heap. 85. <laughs> it's another bottle top, as you'd expect with a signal like that. Oh, it's got a marking on it. Probably alloy bottle top. I'm going to wrap it up there. That's two hours. I've got some awesome little finds in there. I'm pretty happy with that. Given the conditions I was working in, that wasn't uh, easy with those big grass clumps. So tomorrow I might bring a smaller coil, a little snake on a, a Nell snake or something like that. And I'm going to bring Colleen back. Today was a bit of a recon and uh, I told her about this site, I'd researched it. So she's pretty keen to get in here. So uh, this video will resume tomorrow morning. See you then. Okay, yes, it's the next day. Uh, we're back on the site. Colleen's with me. She's got the uh, AT Max with the uh, sharpshooter coil. And I've picked up a uh, uh, AT Pro with a 5x8, so uh, that'll allow me to get into those grass clumps uh, better than I did yesterday. Um, so let's see how we go. Okay, what have we got here, Colleen? You just picked up something, uh, a solid signal. It was in the 60s, yeah, was it? Um, it was like 65, nice solid signal. It, um, looks like it's made of brass. What it looks like is a cupboard or a door hinge. The interesting thing is it looks like it's been re-drilled and repurposed. Hmm. Because it's got too many holes on one side. Interesting. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully there are more things if this is part of the house. Mm. Okay, what's this target? You just called me over? Yeah, this is in the oh, yeah. uh, 50. And I've undug it, uh, dug it a little and it looks like a fork or... Hey, that's spoon. old too. That, oh, or it's just, just the handle. handle. But that's going to have the hallmark, fortunately. That's I'm, a really old style though. Could be 1800s. It won't have hallmark. No, it will have it. It should have it on the back there. Cause okay. you, well, a bowl or the fork might still be there, but that's an old style spoon. Probably late 1800s, early 1900. Nice. So this may be the kitchen. Yeah, that's right. That could have been a bit of a kitchen cabinet hinge, who knows. Yeah. Okay, same hole. So now we've established it's actually a fork, is it? Well, this was the hole over here, where the oh, handle was. Yeah. And then I've got a signal over here. Oh, yeah, I can 58. see it there. So it's actually been so it's, um, broken and separated long ago. I think so. It's just a little... Oh, yeah, it was, yes. Oh, yeah, that's really old. Yeah. Little, nice, um, big like a weapon, that thing. Oh, well, that's all right. We, we've got the whole thing and we'll be able to get a hallmark off it. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice work. Now we've got to find the um, cookie jar with the uh, all the thrippances in for the Christmas pudding. Or the jar full of gold sovereigns. Yeah. <laughs> Righto. Uh, that's good work. I'm glad I brought Colleen to the site. She's having a red hot day in the cutlery. It's 
just got another fork. Look at this. Oh, part thereof. So there must be another handle somewhere. I guess this is why the stuff's thrown away, but they're really old long prong forks. Nice work. Okay, so today uh, Colleen's on the AT Max with the uh, Nell uh, sharpshooter core, the double D9.5. I've got an AT Pro and a National with the 5x8 coil, which is great for getting in, a, in around these glass, grass clumps and these uh, areas. It's really difficult to swing a larger coil. Anyway, where the, the point of the pick is there, I'm going to do a live dig because I'll get a really solid uh, compact 83-84. Have a look at this. 85. Not over there. It's only quite small. It's worth a lot of Don't think it'll be a bottle cap at 85. It's always wrong though, but let's see what we get. Okay. I don't think it'll be far down. You can hear the proportional audio is really loud. Pretty compact and tight. You can hear that double D bumping on it there. Okay, it's out to the ground. Oh, here it is. It's another... <laughs> Alas. It's another uh, brass item, but it could be an old compact case or something that's all squashed up. That may have some writing on it. Never mind. Got to dig those 80s. Okay, we're just going to uh, experience what we're experiencing. The walk through the grass to Colleen here, who said she's seen something... She's just seen something around in her dig hole. Round here. We like to hear that. So, I'm thinking. So, as I said, she's got the uh, AT Max there in the National with that Nell sharpshooter coil. Okay, went into the should round get, thing. Maybe I should get the pro point. Yeah. Out. She also has something round. I'll dig it out. Oh, oh there I it is. Did too. Oh, look. Great big old penny. Nice one. An old one, all right. Look at that. The Commonwealth Penny. What a ripper. Nice work. That'll be a King George V. Oh, so that dates cool. from, you know, yeah, 20s or 30s. Nice work. Hopefully we'll get a date on it. Yeah. We'll give it a bush clean now and uh, get back with a date. Nice work. Right, oh, here it is. It's a really interesting coin. It's a Commonwealth Penny, King George V, uh, 1933. But as you can see, it's a missed strike. The, uh, the centre ring is off centre. That's really interesting. I'll get some um, better photographs when I clean it at home gently. And uh, that's a really interesting coin. It's uh, not been damaged. It's just it's been mis misstruck at the mint by the look of it. But uh, further information on that following. Okay, we're back at the pit. Well, we're not, we haven't left the penny hole. There's something else in here, but it's jumpy. But it's jumping high. Could possibly be a second coin on edge or something like that. So... How deep was that? Six inches? The penny? Um, 15 centimetres the last one. Oh, yeah. 15 centimetres? Six inches in the old money? Yeah. So uh, it was up in the front of the hole here. I think it was just in here somewhere. Well, it's effectively the same hole, isn't it? That's where the penny came from. Yeah. Not, not to say it's another coin, but... No, that's a pretty big signal in there. Well, we'll, we'll see what comes out. Might be the money box. What it is. Full of sovereign. Buried by some old prospector on his way to the gold fields. I don't know where he buried his sovereign here, but. Oh, there it is. Look, it's a roofing nail. Where is well, it? something's coming out there. See the lead roofing nail just on this side of the. up in here. This side. See it here? I can see it. That's what that'll be. It's jumping around. It's lead. No, right, towards here? here. Forward. Oh, there. Yeah. There. Yeah. That's what that'll be. Yeah, that was with the penny. Okay, I'm digging a high tone here. I haven't recovered the target. More than likely, it's going to be a bottle cap because there's old, as you can see, old bottles here. But look at this beautiful little milk glass jar. A bit of Pond's cream or something. I'm not really sure. Face cream or something. Screw top, not terribly old. Nice little uh, complete example, eh? So we started out with clock parts and then we uh, went to some cutlery yesterday and then uh, more cutlery this morning. Collins coin. Now I'm back on the cutlery. I just saw a spoon in here. That wasn't it. Look at this. 
that was a 56 on the bowl. Oh, that's an oldie too, look at that. With that style of handle, and that's complete. Beautiful. That's a really old spoon. I should be able to get a date letter. And a maker's city mark on there. Yes, definitely hallmark. Ripper. I'm just a few paces from that little uh, old teaspoon, and there's an equally aged harmonica reed. Nice. It's the first harmonica reed off the site. Well, I'm out on a bit of an old... Uh, track that's sort of not so grassy and I've been digging um, big iron because uh, old farm implements have been here but I've got this really interesting find it looks like a grate an iron grate of some description but look what's on this side looks like a some sort of design with it's melted onto the iron I can't get this off without busting it, which I'm going to do, aren't I? What's it? It must be made with some symbol for this manufacturer's mark for this grate. It appears to have some sort of writing and a coat of arms. That's really interesting. I don't think it's going to come off. Or maybe it's oh, it's pinned on the centre. Okay, well, I'll have to take this home and clean it and uh, see what that is. That pin goes right through into here somewhere. Maybe it's off an old stove or something, eh? Wood stove or something. It looks like a lion rampant, <laughs> which will be English. Don't know what that is. Okay, we're coming up on another find from Colleen here. You haven't, you haven't got out of the hole yet. I've just um, uncovered it. It was a jumping 65 to 75. But... Oh, look at that. Crucifix, it's a, it, it is a crucifix. You can see uh, Jesus on there. Wow, what the heck? That's a heck of a find. I said that's some sort of wall hanging Haven't, part. No one's touched that. No, in. no one's touched years? it. Grab it out. Oh, it is. Oh, it's beautiful. Jesus on the cross, that's I guess some kind of, uh, would that be like a Catholic relic from up on the wall oh, of the house? Lovely, look. Oh, it's beautiful. It's back and front. Well, that is, that's just awesome. Looks in pretty good condition and too, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, Colin just examined it. It's actually got a hole in the top like it's been on a chain. I wonder if this was a priest's crucifix. I've got no clue. This would be some sort of Latin in here, I suppose, on that little sign. That is just beautiful. Complete, too. Gee, you're lucky you didn't smash that one, because it's a big article. It is big, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. Well Lovely. done. You'd have to wonder uh, about that relic. You wonder how they get the top. Obviously they're a religious family. You would have thought that if you were moving out or something was going on, uh, the first thing you'd take would be your religious articles off the wall. All the precious... Yeah, the family. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, we found crucifixes in the army camps. that are like the chaplain's uh, army crucifixes. The black ebony... Uh, I think they're Bakelite with a silver frame. This one's a very ornate one. But uh, heck of a fine. Mm. But uh, interesting how it's out here, discarded or lost, is weird. Anyway, that's rental detecting. Okay, Colin's just got another coin. Did you, what did you say the target ID was? Um, it was about 82, 84. We haven't touched it yet. It looks to be a strange size. It's definitely not a penny. It's quite small. Oh, it's two cents. <laughs> it is two cents, is it? Yeah. That's rung up quite high, though. Yeah, they do, though. That's fine. Is so it two cents? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's two it cents. Yeah. Well, here's my next find. It appears to be a button. By judging with a loop. Once gilt. And on the front, I don't know. Looks like it's a button back only. Well, that's interesting. It's clearly been gilt, though. Look at that. Um, yeah, looks like it's just the back. But there could be a maker's name on that. Uh, Try to get some info off it. Oh, wait a minute, it's got a little hook. It may not be a button. If you have a look at that, 
on the back it's like a clip-on hook sort of situation well it was a 55 turn so I'm not really sure what this can be I'll study it and see if I can find out some more information this is a nice solid target idea as you can imagine looks like a very substantial piece of a pocket watch I haven't actually found one with that style of uh, internal before I don't know if it's going to have a name, it might have a name on it, I'm not sure. It's a nice, uh, nice old relic actually, it's uh, quite ornate. Well geez, we've had a run on the uh, cutlery today. This one's a 50-55 and I can see it's a spoon bowl. I've just exposed it. I wonder if the uh, handle's involved in the deal. <laughs> okay, that's the tip of the spoon. Oh, it's in the ground there, so it must, the handle must still be there. Let's have a look. This is going to be... Uh, really old style tablespoon with that 19th century type handle there we go should be able to wiggle him out now we'll get a hallmark for sure look at this thing got the sword and the stone coming out oh it's awesome that will have a hallmark what a ripper look at the size of that thing that is uh, definitely 1800s, that one. Beauty. We have a spoon bowl impression <laughs> in that clay. It's hanging on there. Here's my next find. It was a 70s uh, target ID. Looks like an old... Well, I thought it was an old lighter. Maybe it's not. I think it is. That's only a small one, though. Quite... Uh... If there's any detail on there, we'll have a look later. Okay, well, we're going to wrap it up. As you can see, it started to rain. We're not really scared of the rain. Uh, it's, but it's getting a little bit cool. It does get cool in Queensland sometimes. <laughs> For us, anyway, relatively cool. Um, we've been in there, what, four or five hours, you reckon? Yeah, it's a nice cool. Some good finds. Uh, that crucifix is probably the find of the day. And that off struck, uh, misstruck 33 penny is really interesting. I'm going to have to uh, clean that carefully and uh, see if we can find out about that. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching and happy fossicking. Bye for now. Bye for now.